Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're going to be talking about identifying various graph functions just based on looking at a graph and being able to tell which function it is based on, you know, identifying key features. So we're going to go through nine different graphs. In this first graph, this blue graph here, notice that we've got a straight line. Anytime we have a straight line and we've got arrows at the end, this is called a linear function. And when we want to say the parent function, the parent function is pretty much the basic equation, the most basic equation that we can get. And then anything we add or subtract or multiply on top of that function will change the way the graph looks. So in this case, uh, our parent function is f of x equals x. And f of x is just a fancy way of saying y, right? It's just saying the function of x. It's a replacement for y equals x, f of x equals x. Basically, this uh, parent function has a slope of positive 1, and it has a y-intercept of 0. Um, and that's also what this graph is. I know we don't have numbers on it, but you can see it crosses through. Uh, the origin, which would give it a y-intercept of 0, and I've drawn it to roughly have a slope of 1. Now, if we were to change those values in the equation, so let's say we were to have a different slope, our line could be more steep or less steep, or it could be a negative slope, right, and that could change the direction. Or if we were to uh, add or subtract values here, then it could be shifted up or shifted down. So again, the parent function is just the most basic equation that we can get. This next uh, graph over here, this purple one, so notice some characteristics here. This is a nice U shape. We call this a parabola. And this one is facing upward, right? Our arrows are pointing upward. Uh, it could be pointing downward, right? It could look more like a frowny face instead of a smile. Um, but anytime you see this U-shaped parabola, that is called a quadratic. It's a quadratic function. And our parent function for a quadratic would be f of x, or y, equals x squared. So again, we can tack on other things to that x squared to change the shape of this graph in all kinds of different ways. We can do various transformations to it, but the basic parent function is x squared. f of x equals x squared. This next graph over here, this red one, so notice it's got kind of a curvy shape to it. This is called a cubic function. And it's really easy to spot when you're when you're graphing. When you see that, I almost think of it, it's kind of like a backwards S sideways is how I think of it, but it's like a road curving and then going straight again. Um, and a cubic parent function would look like f of x equals x cubed, x to the third power. Our next graph um, is pretty easy to identify because it looks like a W, right? Do you see that W shape with our green line? Uh, and anytime you spot a W shape, you know that this is called a quartic function. And the parent function of a quartic is f of x equals x to the fourth power. So what's interesting is with these past three or uh, past four graphs that we've done is notice that this parent function is to the power of one. We don't see that power of one, but it is there. There is an exponent of positive one right there. And a linear would always have one root or solution. 
a quadratic function is x to the second power and will give us two solutions. A cubic function is x to the third power and gives us three solutions. And a quartic function is x to the fourth power and it gives us four different solutions or roots to the graph. So that's just kind of an interesting tidbit. I purposely put those in order so we could see that progression. Our next graph is a V-shaped graph. So notice this is kind of like a traditional V facing up. Um, it's not always going to be facing up, right? It could be the reverse. It could be facing down. But this is called, and it's really easy to remember, so when you see a V on your graph, that is an absolute value graph. And the parent function of an absolute value graph is f of x, or y, equals the absolute value of x. So that's what those little bars are on either side of the x. It's saying the absolute value of x. This next blue graph, notice it's got two different asymptotes. So an asymptote is kind of like an invisible wall that a line approaches, right? So we have here both a horizontal asymptote where this curve approaches the line of y equals zero, and this curve approaches the line of y equals zero, so this is called a horizontal asymptote. But it also has a vertical asymptote. So notice this line approaches a, a vertical line of x equals zero, and this line approaches a vertical line of x equals zero, and so all together, it creates this really kind of cool shape, and we call that a rational function. And the parent function of a rational would be f of x equals 1 over x, 1 divided by x. That is the parent function of a rational function. These last three graphs that we're going to look at, I wanted to make sure to show them together because I find a lot of students get them confused. So I want to point out some key differences between them so that they're hopefully will be easy to spot for you. Let's first look at this purple graph. So notice that we have got a horizontal asymptote line right here at the y equals zero. So I kind of explain it to my students like an asymptote line is where is it leveling off? So do you see how when we read this left to right, it's like level, level, level up, and now we're shooting up, right? So where is that leveling off part? In this case, it levels off on a horizontal line. So when we have a horizontal asymptote, this is called an exponential. That is an exponential function. And the parent function for an exponential would be f of x equals b to the power of x. So again, when you see just a, we call this kind of like a j curve, when you see just a j curve with a horizontal asymptote, you know it's an exponential. Next, when we look at this blue graph, Notice that this one has a vertical asymptote line, right? So this asymptote falls, it's a vertical line that falls at x equals zero, right? Is where that line falls, that asymptote line. When we have a, just a vertical asymptote, uh, this one is actually called a logarithmic function. And the parent function of a logarithmic function would be f of x equals log base b of x. 
So a lot of people get these two confused and I completely see why because if you're if you're just kind of learning this stuff they might look really similar. Again, look for the asymptote line. Is it a horizontal asymptote or is it a vertical asymptote? What's cool about these two graphs is they are actually inverses of each other. So we'll learn about inverse functions in an upcoming video, but for right now, that's why I think people get them confused a lot because they do look pretty similar. And then this last graph we're going to talk about, this green graph here, um, this one, notice it's got a similar curve, but notice this one doesn't have an asymptote line, right? So this doesn't continue down, it just stops, right? And in this particular graph that I've drawn, it starts right at the zero and then it moves in this upward curved direction, right? But it doesn't continue down here approaching any line, right? So we call this a radical. This is a radical function. And the parent function of a radical function is f of x equals the square root of x. So this is a radical or square root. Try to be really careful with these three different graphs so that you don't get them confused. Really practice with them. When you see the equations, I, they're very different, right? Looking at them, they look all very different, but when we look at the graphs, they do look a little bit similar. So just be careful with those. Now it's your turn to try. So I'm gonna throw you a little bit of a curveball on this you try. I want you to name the function based on the equation. Okay, so I've given four different equation examples. Now notice these are not parent functions, okay? Um, they were originally parent functions, but then we've tack some things onto them, right? We've changed it in some way. So, uh, but the key characteristics are still there in those equations. So I want you to uh, make a decision. You may need to look back at the other pages, but making a, a decision about which function matches each equation. I will post the answer in the video description below. This has been Miss Miss Math Tutorials.